Hi everyone, it's Nicole Wilkins with Fitness Rx for Women, and this is my next question and answer segment where I took your questions from Facebook and I'm going to answer them for you today. The first question I have is, how many protein shakes are you allowed to have in one day? I like to have one when I first get up in the morning to quickly get protein in my body, and then you're supposed to have one before and after your workout. How many do you suggest and what do you suggest? Well, a protein shake, if you're in a rush in the morning, is a really great way to get in a quick source of protein. And after your weight training workout, it's, it's quickly digested. Uh, protein shakes are great because they're low in carbs, they're low in fats, and they get into your system fast. There really isn't a specific time that you have to have a protein shake. In fact, you can supplement real food with protein shakes. It doesn't really... It's not like you have to have a protein shake, but I, I really wouldn't recommend going over two or three maximum a day. I really think that whole foods do a lot better for your body um, in, in other ways too, you know. The next question I have is, what would you say the top five supplements are for a female figure competitor, preferably in the off season trying to add lean muscle mass? Thank you. The top five supplements, uh, I recommend a multivitamin. Take your um, like omega-369, fish oil, essential fatty acids, um, glutamine, branched chain amino acids, and creatine. So if you're trying to build some muscle, try taking about five grams of, pro of creatine each day. So I'm confused with all the different things I read about weight, weighted ab exercises. Some articles I read say no weighted ab exercises because you will look thick, while other articles encourage weight, weighted exercises. What is your opinion? I think that a combination of the both is the best. So weighted ab exercises are fine. It, if you are already genetically thick-waisted, I think maybe... Um, doing more without would be good, but a combination of the both is, is totally fine. What else can I do instead of leg extensions for definition? Well, leg extensions alone aren't going to give you leg definition. Uh, if you want to train your legs, squats, lunges, those are like the two main powerhouses for legs you hit all angles, all muscles that incorporate the leg in those two exercises. So those should be staples in every leg workout. And as far as getting the definition, that comes from decreasing your body fat, which comes from diet as well. The next one is, is it bad to do squats with a Smith machine? I read somewhere that it makes you use bad form and it's better to just use a barbell. What do you think? I do not think that it's bad to use a Smith machine at all. I think as long as your heels are flat on the floor, your chest is up, your back is slightly arched, and your knees aren't going over your toes, so you're kind of sticking your butt back as you squat down, a Smith machine is great for, I mean, I still use it. Advanced athletes can use it. It's good for more stabilization because it's on a pulley. It's great for beginners because you don't have to worry about losing your balance. But barbells trump everything, I think, as far as recruiting a lot more muscle for the stabilization, you know, for balance. It's a very good compound movement, so it gets your heart rate elevated very fast. It's, it's really good for building and shaping up your legs. So Smith Machine squats are totally fine. I use them on occasion. Um, barbell squats are... Are even better. And the last question I have is, I'm going crazy. If it's simply calories in versus calories out, I should be losing weight. I'm not. I haven't lost one pound in four weeks. I've been training super hard. I know I'm in a deficit. I track everything I eat. I cycle my carbs. I do high intensity interval training. I can't figure it out. Would you have any suggestions or ideas to what my next step should be in trying to lose body fat? Uh, okay, I don't know what your, all right, I don't know exactly what you're eating, so it's difficult for me to say, you know, 
try this or eliminate that. Um, you don't have to cycle your carbs. It's not a necessity. And if you're at too much of a deficit, sometimes that can hinder your weight loss as well. It's not always about the number on the scale. If you Just because you don't see that number going down doesn't mean that your body composition isn't changing. If you're weight training on a consistent basis, you could be gaining some lean, dense muscle tissue and also losing body fat. Now, just an FYI, muscle can't turn into fat and fat can't turn into muscle. So instead of only focusing on the scale, focus on how your clothes are fitting, how's your energy, uh, take circumference measurements around your waist, your hips, your arm, your thigh, you know, measure those every two weeks or every month if you want to as another way of determining if you're seeing the progress that you want. You can also, I mean, I don't know how much cardio you're doing, but if, if you're only doing two or three days, maybe try adding a fourth day. If you're having a lot of um, like empty calories included in that, like hop or uh, you know, a lot of sugar, maybe replacing the sugar with more complex carbohydrates, making sure that your macronutrients are in a good balance, you know, 40, 40, uh, 20, you know, just making sure that you have a good balance of proteins, fats, and carbs, and not too much carbs and too much, uh, not enough of something else. So that can also make a difference in how your body looks. So hopefully, you know, maybe cutting out sugar substitutes, if I didn't mention that yet, drink more water, um, but just be patient. It will happen over time. So make sure you're journaling everything and keep, keep pushing forward. So that's all the questions I have for this week. Until next week, keep living the fit life, and I'll see you guys soon.